Hi guys, and welcome to part 57 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Most of you who follow my videos know that I am a big fan of all the Bethesda moddable games, the Elder Scrolls games, the Fallout games, and so on. But there are one or two things that I'm not that keen on, um, and some of you are aware of those. And the first one is achievements. I am not a fan of achievements in most games, especially not games of immersion. Um, games where you try to sink into character or sink into the world. I hate those little pop-up windows that remind you that you are playing a computer game. So it may come as some surprise to people that I actually like this next mod. Because I'm going to start this video with a mod called Achieve That, which adds achievements into the game itself. These are not achievements that pop up on the Steam window. These are achievements that pop up in-game. And that is the key difference for me, and that's why I actually like this mod. If I go along to the mod configuration menu, and you are going to need this, it requires SKSE and it requires Sky UI. Well, at least the mod configuration menu. See the video I made for using MCM without Sky UI if you need that. And you'll see an option for Achieve That. If we go there, you'll see some subcategories. And there is apparently over a hundred, although for me it often seems like there are more, but there are all these little achievements for doing fairly simple things. Obtain a thousand gold, ten thousand, a hundred thousand. And if you look at the bottom, it tells you you actually get a reward for getting this far. You get plus 20 carry weight, which is, you know, fairly nice. Um, and this, for me, is one of the reasons I like this instead of the, the sort of achievements you get for Steam. It's not some artificial trophy to put on your Steam profile. This is an in-game achievement, an in-game effect for meeting that achievement um, requirements. And it feels more like quests. In fact, essentially, that is what they all are. Armor Smith, craft 50 armors. And once you've crafted 100 armors, you get 1,000 gold. 200 armors, you get plus three in smithing. So you actually, you actually become better at smithing after crafting 200 armors. It's not overpowered. It's not going to change your game. But it's a nice little bonus and a nice little boost. Now... It does give you little pop-up warnings when you've achieved something, uh, but it's completely configurable. If you go along to achieve that and go to the settings, you can enable the completed notifications or disable them. You can enable them for upper left corner notifications and so on. You can just disable, you can even disable the rewards. If you like the achievements but you think the rewards are overpowered, they're not really. But if you do, you can disable them. So it's completely up to you which features you use. Simple mod, great idea, very, very well done indeed. Uh, there's no reason not to use this, even if you're like me and you generally don't like achievements, uh, but you like quests and you like small rewards, this mod is definitely one to try out. Now, something else I really do not like, in fact, I would go so far as to say I hate it, um, in a lot of these games, actually, um, it's the mini games you get for locked items, for going through locks. These little mini games where you have to twiddle something and get your lock picks. I hate them. Um, it's no secret on my Let's Plays. Everyone knows about them. When they watch me doing them and failing them terribly, um, it's because I've just got no patience. No, um, I just, I've got no time for them. Do not like them, not one little bit. So this next mod is actually an essential mod for me now. This is on my must-have list. And you activate the mod. Once you've installed it, you go along to Mod Configuration, go to Lock Overhaul, and the General tab, and you need to activate the Auto Lock Picking. Once you do that, if I now select the chest, I now have the option to Auto Pick or Open. If I select Open, it does the usual lock picking mechanism, excuse the uh, tutorial tip there. Um, and I'm gonna exit out of this because I don't want to do that. This time I'm going to use auto pick. You could have just you that, and there you go. Though. It's used two lock picks from me um, and also added a bounty. But now you'll also see that the chest looks like it's locked. That's because the message doesn't change until you look away and then back again. That's uh, an in-game issue, not nothing to do with the mod whatsoever. Um, and now I can loot this chest. 
Now, you will be using lockpicks when using the auto unlock, and the harder the lock, the more lockpicks it will take. So you do need to take a good supply of lockpicks with you, but lockpicks are not that expensive or hard to craft, and they don't weigh anything. So the mod could be considered a little bit overpowered. However, if you go along to the mod configuration menu, you can activate lock requirements. Now, the great thing with this is it forces you to actually have some skill in it. Now, my character has very low skill, I believe about 30, which means I could do novice locks and apprentice locks, but adept and expert, I could not. This, these are the defaults. Um, to, to give you an idea of how this works, I'm going to actually select novice and give it a skill requirement of 100. Um, obviously, this would be silly, but that's what I'm going to do just to show you. Now, if I activate this chest, it goes straight. As you can see, the little message up here, uh, I don't think I can open that lock. Um, so now I have to go the, the old-fashioned way, which on a master lock is very difficult with an unskilled character. And it's also added the option to be able to break locks in other manners. So, for example, you can activate smash locks. And once again, you get a certain set of skill requirements for each lock and the weapons you are allowed to open locks with. Now, I use one-handed weapons, so I don't want to restrict it to two-handed weapons, and I don't see why my, my mace cannot do this. You can even have all, which I think means you can shoot it off with a, a bow. And, I, hey, why not? So now I need a skill of one, which I definitely have, to smash open a lock with a mace. There you go. I'll look away, look back. It's now opened. I've smashed the lock with my mace. And don't worry if you are not a warrior type and have no skill at one-handed weapon, and you because you're a mage, if you go along once again to lo lock overhaul, Features, unlock spell, unlock, enable unlock spell, excuse me. Same thing, only this time with allowed spells, destruction, no shock, which makes sort of sense, destruction, or only alteration. Now, I rather like lightning, so I'm going to allow shock. Thank you so much. You could have just I and there you go. <laughs> Very, very easy, very customizable, very useful, and absolutely on my must-have mods right now. So it's a great idea, it's very well executed, and extremely polished. Cannot recommend it enough. And the last mod I'm going to cover is I'm going to deal with something else that's slightly irritating. You ever sort of sneaking around... Hunting your prey off in the dark, and then you take the shot for that great sneak attack, only to get that horrible thump. I mean, what is that? Let's face it, it breaks the immersion when you're sneaking around quietly and your sneak attack sounds like, I don't know, some clap of thunder. So, this great mod called No Sneak Attack Sound does pretty much exactly, exactly what it says. There you go. No sound. And that is basically all there is to this mod. Very simple idea, very well done, and for me, a massive improvement. Installation of all these mods is pretty easy. The Achieve That mod does require Sky UI and SKSE. I'm not 100% sure if it requires SkyUI's actual menus, but it does require MCM. You may be able to get this working with just MCM. Um, if you're curious as to how to get MCM without SkyUI, I did do a video on this. You can check that out. It gives you the full details of how to do it. I can't confirm whether this mod will work with just MCM, but I've not seen anything in the mod that wouldn't. Um, so I, I think, generally speaking, whenever you see some, some mod that says Sky UI required, it probably means MCM required. Uh, but I am not guaranteeing that. The author's requirements are Sky UI and SKSE. Um, for installation, just go along to the file, download with the manager, and hit activate. Lock overhaul seems to be the same. Again, 
it does require Sky UI version 3.0, and therefore, by definition, it requires SKSE. But I think you could get away with just the MCM menu. You do require the MCM menu for this because the mod does not come activated. You need to activate it in MCM. To actually install the mod, go along to the main files, download the manager, and activate. Very simple. The no sneak attack sound mod is has no requirements actually. This, this is the one that's probably the easiest. No requirements whatsoever. Just go along to files, download with manager and activate. Very, very simple. And before we finish, I want to talk about a new video series that I've started. Now, I released a video a few days ago where yeah, I was discussing the choice of mods I use in Skyrim Mod Sanctuary and how it might be a little unfair to mod authors who make mods that take a long time to review. Obviously, making these videos, it's a little easier to do reviews of mods that only take an hour to look at and evaluate. This is obviously, you know, this is, this is something to worry about because I definitely don't want Quest mod authors to feel discouraged. So I've started a new series where I am going to focus on mods that I have not had time to try yet, but I think look interesting and think that the community might well want to have a look at. It's not just going to be quest mods, it's, it's going to be any mod that I find interesting, but I don't have time to review right now. But it may be something I'm going to review in several weeks. And this will give everyone a heads up on the sort of mods that are out there without me having to commit to giving it a review without actually having played it. And the first one was released and it was focusing on a mod called Immersive Bounty Hunting, which looks like it's got a lot of potential, could be very interesting and add several hours of fun to Skyrim. So I'm gonna put a link to that. And what I'm going to do is at the end of all the Skyrim mod sanctuaries, I will include any um, of these preview videos, any of these Skylight videos as links so that you guys can check them out. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. We're going to end, as always, with some screenshots that you guys have posted. Um, if you want to post screenshots, I will leave a link down below. You're more than welcome to post them. I try to get as many as I can on each video. They're really great, way better than I could do, so I do appreciate you guys posting those. I hope you found the video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, remember, please click the like button. I always appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you guys for whichever video you decide to join me for. And until then, as always, have fun.